length, and then we'll split that in half. So let's go down about eight inches off the ground. Down. Okay, I've got 37 foot three and three eighths. Where are you measuring two? All the way to the outside? I'm inside wall. Inside wall, burn two inches. Burn two? Yep. Are you on the outside? I'm Right up against this stud. Okay, that's where I want you, but, but why am I burning two? Because that's where I can hold it. Okay. So, I got to burn two off of there, so I'm 37 foot one and three eighths. 37 foot one and three eighths. One of the tough parts about working in the wintertime is all this extra freaking clothing. I mean, I'm already a full-size guy, but by the time I throw on tool bags and overalls and long underwear, it's like packing around a dead body on my shoulders all day. Okay, do the math on that and tell me what half is. You can see the difference on those two pencils. When I sharpen this one with my pocket knife, or that little pencil sharpener, this one gives me a much finer, much finer point. Um, but I also like, I also like to use the crowns because they mark better, especially where the floor is wet. There might be ice. This is going to leave a mark that's not going to get washed away. Nineteen and three sixteenths. Are you going to burn? Yep. So you're going for 21 and 3 sixteenths and there should be a little mark under there. Okay. Say it again. 3 sixteenths. 19 foot and 3 sixteenths minus 2 inches is 18 foot 10 and 3 sixteenths. Hold it. Okay. Okay, so there's our center. That should be easier to find. Um, now let's work back. Four and a half feet. Yeah. You got your crayon. pencil mark because we got to get real finite okay okay so we've got these marked out and, the, and these little crowns make it really nice to find them especially where the floor is wet and icy they mark really really well but you still want your pencil for for getting right down there to that 16th or whatever to really get it right on the line. So we'll keep laying this out. So we were lucky enough to get uh, Skillsaw and Milwaukee to send us some tools and let us beat on them for a little bit and run them through the paces and use them on this project. And so today we're going to open up the Milwaukee cordless sawzall. I'm really excited about this. For, for years and years, it's been drag a cord around, trip over the cord, uh, deal with electrical issues, and to have a cordless sawzall that lets us get into the places where it, it seems like it's always, if you need a sawzall, you're trying to get somewhere into some obscure... Um, you're always trying to get into some weird location. So not having to ha drag that uh, electric cord around, I'm really excited about. We already run the M18 batteries that this uses. 
Um, so this is an, an easy thing for us. We're already using the drills and, and other tools. So adding this to our collection is going to be great. And, and we're really grateful to Milwaukee for hooking us up. Um, so uh, later on down the road, we'll open up the skill saw. This is the, the, the big dog. We've actually got some timbers on the front porches and the back porches that we've got to cut and install. And I'm really excited about using this. Um, you know, it's not as big as the Makita timber saw, um, but it's certainly bigger than our seven and a quarter inch blade. It'll, it'll, this will be awesome for cutting timbers and we'll open this up and show you when we do the install the timbers on the front and back porches. So when we get into putting up the timbers, we'll open up this saw and put it through the paces on some of the timber framing stuff that we've got to do on this project. So for today, we'll get into the Milwaukee and um, try it out and we'll save this for another couple of days and we'll show you this one down the road. thing I've always really liked about Milwaukee, even if it was 20 years ago when I first got into construction, the Milwaukee Sawzalls came in a really rigid, heavy duty metal box and we would lug those around in the tool trailers or in the back of the truck and they would, they would last forever. Um, well after the, the Sawzall had been worked to death, we still were using those metal cases for uh, all sorts of tools, supplies, whatever. I still got a couple of old metal Milwaukee toolkits, so I like to see this this rigid case. I, I don't have any worry about letting this thing bounce around in the tool trailer or in the back of the truck or on the job and it coming apart. So I, I like seeing that. Um, It's, it's heavy, it feels solid as heck, um, but, but the rubber grip is really nice. Quick and easy. So two batteries and the charger, that's really nice. Uh, a lot of kits, some of them even come with no batteries or one battery and then you're dead in the water. Um, luckily we've got other batteries and you can see that this is a battery that we've been using on drills and other things, and it's taken some ab some abuse. Um, definitely not as pretty as the new ones, but everything's interchangeable, and that'll be sweet. Uh, they sent us a, a little cute blade. We like these these bigger ones, so let's put one in. So, I don't know if you can see that right in there. All I have to do is lift that up. Lift it up, set the blade, it's solid. I really like the trigger. It, it starts off really slow. So I can control the speed with the trigger. Um, let's try this thing out. Let's cut some stuff. <laughs> that is sweet. So after doing a little cutting with this thing, um, I'm impressed. That's a solid piece of equipment. So we, we end up with, what, 
two new batteries. And I've, I've really liked these batteries. Where we operate in cold climates, um, these batteries will go down to 18 below. Um, I've never had any problems with them. Uh, we charge them up every night in the tool trailer and they just go, go, go. Um, so I, this is going to be a fantastic addition. We'll, we'll keep using it and keep shooting video on it as we go along. But just initially it's solid. This is a great kit. Um, it would make a fine addition to anybody's tool collection. I don't think you'd ever be disappointed that you had this. I think you'd you'd absolutely use the heck out of it. So, um, so far, absolute thumbs up. We'll we'll keep using it and see how it goes. So what I've got is this wall is going to go up, but I need backing on the inside and I need backing on the outside for sheetrock support. So I'm going to end up with two California corners. Okay. So we're going to go inch and a half. Right? Mm -hmm. And then down here, this 20 and a half, so 19. And then, right, because we're over um, 24 is clear out here. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're not worried about another stud breaking at 24 for insulation or, or sheetrock support. So that's all we need. So. But give me two California corners, okay? Yep. So, and you could build those and then put them in or build it straight and then lay the other ones in. Whatever, whatever's quickest and easiest. Okay. But this thing will get a California corner here and one down here. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to get, I'm going to get the one here and then I'm going to get this one here. Okay. That, right? But then on the other side over here, I'm going to get this one here and this one here. Okay. Ah, okay. And that'll give me where we tie into the, the other walls in the corners. That'll give us backing and support uh, for uh, the other walls and for sheetrock backing. are coming together we're getting these this bathroom put together it's it's a lot of measuring everything's got to be just right for tubs for toilets for countertops for closets bedroom hallways there's got to be enough room for doors uh, door casing and and trim around doors so it's a lot of work laying that out and getting it just right it'll save a lot of headache and hassle later for for the sheet rockers and then for finished guys when they're hanging doors and doing case and base so um, it's just kind of slow and go, but it'll get faster as we get into the more open areas. Uh, didn't get, I, I, I didn't get a good, you want to go again? Yeah, let me peel some off. Okay.
Okay. Hold on. Go. Sweet. That'll work. mark out the floor, uh, put a coat of this on, and then tonight, even if it frosts or snows or whatever, we'll be able to, to still find those uh, marks on the floor no matter what happens. The other thing is this is a high traffic area, and it, we, as we build walls in other places, this may get trampled on or scuffed up. So this, the, the, lacquer, the lacquer spray will help protect um, all of our chalk lines.